Hey guys. Um, all right, this tutorial um, is really more so an introduction um, to the Rhinoceros software. Um, so in this video, I'm going to cover the general interface uh, of uh, Rhino, give you some orientation, um, also a bit of a beginning in terms of drawing and modeling um, in Rhino. I'll be using some uh, tutorial uh, files that you'll be able to uh, access on the OneDrive. Also get a bit into editing and transforming, so really preliminary tools and how you're able to work with um, work in Rhino. And this will lead up to another tutorial that will be more specific about the upcoming uh, exercise. Alright, so to begin I'm just going to launch uh, Rhino. And you notice a few things here right away at this beginning window. I'm able to select different template options. Um, generally for architecture or even the scale of interior design, you're going to want to use large objects um, and also have the units uh, to be inches. That is the industry, industry standard um, as opposed to feet. And so I'm going to launch that template file. and that's the only file we have open and then I'm just going to go into properties so there's drop downs here um, for the menu um, there are also these tabs and these tabs that you see on top here um, you can customize these and have certain tabs in place or delete others these tabs are really uh, expansions um, of um, these standard tools and also um, a different way to get to the tools from the pull, pull down. So really all the tools are in those three areas. The standard toolbar here that has these little dog ears. Of course if I click on one of those I see that there are a lot more options here in terms of creating a surface. Um, if I go up here to surface we can see I have um, a series of options here. So those are similar, similar to these. And then also if I go to um, surface or one of the tools for surfaces. This is surface, um, not necessarily creating surfaces, but for um, working with surfaces, solid tools. Um, but we'll see those similar um, sort of options there um, in those basic three areas. Um, so I'm going to go back to have it to be standard and I'm going to go ahead and, and go into file. I just want to look at properties quick and there's a couple different ways just like um, many programs, there are a few different ways um, to access the same thing. Um, you notice here there's also a, a, a command prompt. I have it up here on top. Um, in AutoCAD I tend to have the command line on the bottom. For whatever reason it's more comfortable for me and Rhino to have it on the top um, here. So I could also just start typing in, you know, in a case of surface. Uh, and it's going to start giving me options depending on what I'm typing in, what I want to do with the surface or different surface commands. So, not unlike AutoCAD, if I just start typing in um, uh, a word, it's going to give me options or different tools and I could start to set, uh, uh, select from those tools listed there or use some of the others uh, that are more specific. There's a variety of ways to access um, any one particular command or tool. So um, what I want to do is access the properties of this overall file. I want to make sure that my units are set correctly. One way to access them is to go into File, drop down Properties, and that's going to give me this uh, window here. And as you can see, one of the options in Document Properties is Units. Uh, we can see it's set to inches since we used that template file. Although the inches are in decimal, I actually want the inches to be feet and inches. And you can um, select a different display um, precision. I'm going to go ahead and select one eighth. And there I can, uh, um, I'm happy with that. So the other way that I usually get to um, the properties is I'll actually go here. This is actually the render sort of sphere. If I right click, you see. Um, there are um, left and right click options and that's true for many commands um, in Rhino so if I just left click I'll get into uh, execute a render if I right click I'll get to render settings 
but render settings are in the document property. So this window pops up. I can go back to units, make my uh, uh, adjustments um, accordingly. And I can get into other adjustments in terms of, um, for example, the grid. Um, the grid here, this is um, on the base. You can say it's on the XY plane, um, Z0. Um, so that's the base plane, and it, it'll show up um, in elevation um, in the Z. So it'll be either X and uh, Z or Y and Z, depending on how you're looking at it. I can adjust the grid count, um, the minor line spacing. So this is a set at every one inch. You know, I could change that to six inches if I wanted to. Major lines every 12 inches or one foot. I could say, well, maybe six inches makes more sense. Um, I don't typically use snap spacing or grid snap. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that and you can see that grid will change. It changed in the background. Um, the other important part of the way Rhino is set up um, are the viewports. And so we see here the um, default is the four viewports. We have a top view, a perspective view, a front view, and a right view. So if I click um, in one of these uh, areas, one of these viewports, you'll see that um, this is going to be selected. So now I know which area I'm in, and if I use my scroll wheel, then I can zoom in and out. And for each, if, in my, if I'm in an orthographic view, um, the scroll wheel is zooming for either of those, so I can zoom in and out. So I just have to hover in one area or the other. I don't even necessarily have to click, and I can activate that viewport. Um, the right click and hold down in perspective view is going to give me an orbit. So then I can sort of rotate around. If I hold my shift key down and um, right click, hold down, it's more of a pan. And that gets to be useful for um, navigating around your model. Um, in the orthographic view, the right click is automatically pan. Um, and that's true for the top, the front, and the right. So basically the uh, whoops, right click is also executes the last command. I accidentally right clicked and that executed the last command that I um, had executed, um, which is a nice little shortcut um, as well. Um, so those are the viewports. Now in each viewport we see um, these different, uh, um, there's a little arrow here with there are different options for each one of these. So for this, I'm going to actually open up um, one of the template files that I'll be working with, or the workshop files, rather. And that way you can see some of the um, different characteristics of the viewports, different things to uh, think about as you're modeling. Some people prefer different um, view modes. Um, it's really up to you. Um, the default. I believe it's a default is um, a wire um, wire mesh here, so wireframe view. So I can change this to any of these other options. Um, another common one is shaded, so I can see you know the shaded view. I can pop over here and do the same shaded. So that gives me a little bit of a, a better idea how the surface is behaving than some others. Um, there are other options here. I'll go into perspective for this. Um, there are x-rays, so you can kind of see through the um, images a little bit, or the surfaces rather. So I can see that line um, of this surface through this other surface. That can be a little bit confusing because there's a pretty common uh, sort of uh, contrast or tonality from one to the next. So to me, I find that a bit confusing. I tend to use the ghosted um, display and so I can tell when one object is kind of moving through the other and sometimes you need to know that that's there or how, if you want to select it or what have you um, but it's visually to me it's a little bit more uh, clearer there are other um, view display options here as well um, technical is just going to really give you the line work and so you see here um, we have solid lines for objects, and when uh, this object goes behind or this surface goes behind this surface, it turns into a hidden line. 
Um, so that's nice to see, um, depending on, you know, if you want to use it as a template drawing or what have you, you already have some of that information there. I can use the artistic view, so this is more like a pencil drawing on some like textured sort of paper. Um, so different line weights start to show up. And let's see, there's pen, so there's still kind of a paper uh, sort of background to this. And then I have the, the dash lines here as well. And this is for B-Ray, so that's a, basically a rendered view, which is one of the options here. This is turning into a rendered view. I don't have a sun set up or anything, no lights. And so this is just um, kind of default information. And it's referring um, back to uh, some of the information over here. And I'll talk about this area uh, in just a, a second. So meanwhile, I'm going to change this back to ghosted. As you're working through a project, and one thing that's really nice about the viewports here, if I just you notice I've been working in these little windows and screen real estate gets to be an issue as you're working through a project or what have you. And so I may want to just have this, this viewport fill the whole screen. All I have to do is double click on this, uh, on the viewport name. And it'll bring that in as a, a, a full window view. So then I really can kind of work through whatever it is I'm working through. If I want to go back then, select a different view, I can do that and, and uh, have these other views available. If I'm in this view as well, you notice at the bottom there are also viewport tabs. I use these a lot as well. Um, so I can just toggle between the front, the right, the top, or in, in whatever those might be. I can also reset these as well. So if I go down through this, you'll see set view. And so um, plan, top, bottom, all those options are there. And I also can start to create um, some uh, named views and different kinds of perspective, isometric, um, that you can set it at. Let's see, that's a basic a paraline um, drawing. Um, let's see, go back to set view. Pick different uh, orientations for that. Or I can name a view. So I'm gonna go back in here and um, set view, perspective, um, and maybe I'm gonna look at these this surface right here. Let's get a cool view of this. Um, another nice tool that um, I do use for um, setting up perspectives um, is the lens length tab. All of these won't necessarily be here. If I right click in this area and says show toolbar, there are a series of options. And again, these are basically all the other tools that are available around here. Um, but I can sort of um, show specific toolbars. So if I scroll down, you see one is lens length. And all I did for this, let's see, it's next to drafting. Um, I showed the toolbar here. And I'm just going to drag this up into the tabs area. And now it's just there. Um, so I know where it is. It doesn't have to float in this space. I can just dock it there. They're probably... There are other places you can dock some of these windows, or these tabs are uh, up above. So I've kind of tailored this to what I use. Um, and you can do the same. You might have some differences here, but that's the way you would access that. You would right click in this area, show toolbar, and then you can make your selection from all of these. So I'm going to pick a wider angle view, wider angle camera rather. And this is where using the pan, hold my shift key down, orbit up a little bit. If I um, right click to orbit, I can move around, but if I hold my shift key down, it's going to keep the elevation of that height the exact same. So basically it's rotating around so once I'm able to set a particular height you know um, eye height for example for a building um, I can maintain that uh, horizon by holding the shift key down 
after I right click in the perspective uh, viewport so I know the elevation is correct for either of those and it's another way to kind of maneuver around um, the views there but just to show you quickly um, set view if I go down to name views right now there are no named views here um, but I could go ahead and hit this and say I want to save this view and I can call it whatever I'd like I'm just going to call it view um, one you might call it perspective one or something like that okay so now I have that view saved so if I work with this and change the camera length and do some different things I'm maneuvering around and modeling and I want to get back to that exact uh, view now I can go up here you see it's I set that view as view one but now I'm kind of rotating around I've changed that so I want to go back to the set view here view one it brings me right back to that view so that's really important um, especially if you're rendering and rendering in different ways you might render some line work you might want to um, export like some of this line work or something in addition to a, a rendering um, so you might want to combine those in Photoshop or what have you and you can save this as a PNG so you can you won't have the background or anything um, but you may want to come back to that same view and do it several times so if you're just trying to approximate it by orbiting and panning that's impossible to set that same view up right so naming the views ends up being um, a really important step. Okay, I'm going to change this back to uh, Ghosted. And you can see there are other options here. You can reset the construction plane. The C plane, it refers to construction plane, set cameras. Um, I tend to set views instead of cameras. Um, in the background bitmap, you can place a background bitmap in there. That would be part of uh, this view different grid options, clipping plane, I won't really go into that, but basically you could take um, uh, uh, cut through an object without actually cutting the object, so basically you can get like a section view of an object through a clipping plane, um, different display options, viewport properties. To the right, you'll notice here, um, and this is important for several reasons, but um, what you'll see here are the layers um, I know it's really small, let me just expand that out. So we see layers here. Um, and with the default, you see there's default. Um, this is just the template that we opened up before. Um, it gives you some just general layers. You may want to rename those, and all it takes to double click in that name, and you can just type in, um, erase that, and type in whatever you want. structure or something like that. You can also give it different colors. And so if I click on this color, um, I can change the color of it. That starts to get important as you start to think about modeling and layers. So structure, uh, maybe your grid or the uh, like a structural grid is a uh, one color. Um, your actual structural members is a different color. Um, material skins or glazing would be different colors. And so then you can just easily visually see which layer is on depending on the color. Um, and use that as a key for you know navigating and modeling and so forth. Um, let's go back to this this one. I'll show you more here. Um, so in this this is a, an old tutorial file that came from uh, Rhino that's I've modified over the years. But these are all just black, and so everything is black. So that gets to be a little bit difficult to see or distinguish between one or the other. So then if I um, extrude curve, that's over there. Um, edge surface, maybe I want that to be gold. I'll kind of zoom out so you can see the differences. So there's edge, edge is there. I think some of the layers are got a little screwed up over the years as well. Um, two rail, um, maybe we'll make that a green. You have to be careful with the colors that you choose. One of the colors you do not want to choose for a layer is yellow. Uh, you notice if I select, I just left clicked on this object, just selected it. Um, and the default for highlighting a selection is yellow. So then if I have a layer um, that is yellow, the 
it's going to look like this is always selected. Um, so that can be really confusing. So I would recommend staying away from yellow as a color. And you want to make sure colors that you can actually see them. That's really hard to see. It needs to be a little bit um, darker. Maybe I'll go with this blue. So anyway, there are different options that you can uh, sort of customize that. Layer management, again, just like anything, is really important um, as you're working through it. It's true for Photoshop, Illustrator, AutoCAD. It's also true here. Um, so you want to make sure to uh, keep tabs on that. There are also, uh, in the layers area here, um, this is for materiality. So if you wanted to try to render some of this, I can select... Um, that and there's some basic options here. You can have a render color, whatever color you'd want to have that be, a glossy finish, reflectivity, transparency. So if it's like glazing, you might pump that up. There's just these sliders. You can introduce um, different textures um, with these um, and other advanced settings. Um, so for really general sort of rough um, materiality, I mean, this this is okay. You can set up perspectives and get something out of it. You can also set up the sun and so forth um, through this. And not through that specifically, but there is a rendering tool, and then here's a little sun, and then we could start to turn the sun on or off and pick a location. Um, here it's uh, off the coast of Africa. Um, so you can pick different um, locations. Um, there are some pull downs here so you can get close to Idaho or type in the latitude and longitude of where we are and then it'll locate that and then it'll give us accurate information for this longitude and latitude and then you could toggle um, the year um, here and also the time of day right and you see here how it's these are changing in terms of the direction this is in response to the position of the sun uh, and the uh, angle um, that the sun will be at different times of day different directions you can see there and so forth <laughs> So you can set that up there, um, and then that will obviously affect some of the, um, the rendering quality and shadows and so forth. Line type is also an option here. Print with, I mean, I don't generally print through um, Rhino, um, so um, I tend to do more of my 2D drafting in AutoCAD, so I don't pay too much attention to that, but that's something that, that is there. Now you notice when I go to... Um, a rendered view, some of these objects have colors to them. So if I select this object, I can go to properties, which is also right here. Um, you can see different options. These are just general, um, very similar to AutoCAD actually. Again, the interface is very similar to AutoCAD. Um, so uh, you can see the layer that it's on, and I could change that if I wanted to for that object. The display color by layer, line type by layer by layer. Here, if I go to materiality, um, right now it's um, not set by layer, it's set by object. You can see that here, assign material by object. So that's why these are different colors than what we're seeing in the layers menu. So I can go back here and say I want it to be assigned by layer, and it's going to be uh, associated to it that way. Um, same thing for this. This is obviously by object, uh, by layer. There we go. Um, the layers, I think, are all black. Well, let's see what this layer is. It's actually on. So this circle, again, is um, the object properties. This little tube of paint is for materials. Um, texture mapping, that might be specific for that. Um, decals, which I haven't really gotten into. One thing to understand is Rhino is also used for industrial design. So there are a lot of other... Uh, tools available that are more applicable um, to that. It's on blend surface, which is black. And so a black layer, blend surface. And again here, if I, in the layers menu, if I check um, in this, it doesn't really it's called out, but this little check mark means it's the current layer. So I can change my current layer depending on what I wanted to uh, uh, work on. Um, I can also turn off certain layers here so the light bulb that's similar to AutoCAD as an icon at least I can turn on and off the layers I can also lock layers so if I want to see it but I don't want to be able to select it you can um, lock the layers those are handy tools um, but you see here the blend surface there were that I just changed the attributes of these surfaces um, to um, 
uh, it's gray because it's black layer right here and so the default is for it to sort of show up as this gray tone um, so so you know how that behaves I guess um, we're not going to get too much into rendering at all so I'm going to go back to my ghost of display um, and deal with that now I mentioned other display options um, let's go back to artistic um, and if I go over here to this tab that's display now I have different options for the display mode so it's active viewport viewport one I can change what the view is right here so similar options to what I can access in the viewport um, let's go back to artistic and I can toggle certain things on and off if I want to show um, hidden lines I can toggle that on um, this is decent when you have a model set up um, there's a little bit of shading that happens here and even more so if you have the Sun uh, set up or turned on um, to serve as a background drawing a lot of times you know I know people have been struggling with the last project with the geometries in terms of how to set that up um, as a drawing because they're challenging geometries they're not simple blocks like we see here in the background um, so you can set up a view pretty accurately in uh, Rhino and then you can export this um, as an image um, in order to use it as an underlay and you can develop the perspective more you know I don't think you want to in any tool you don't want to necessarily get into modeling every inch of a project but you do want to be able to um, set up the overall drawing or what have you so this could be helpful as part of that um, workflow I'm going to go back to layers here and then there's a general help so if you're executing a command so go back here um, and this is useful for beginners as well um, technical support uh, the website classroom training book and tutorials which are pretty handy so these are all hyperlinked um, to um, tutorials or what have you so you can make use of this but also if I'm going to execute a particular command I'm just going to click polyline here right away it's going to come up with some um, uh, uh, um, steps and uh, procedures uh, ideas about how to how that tool is going to behave even a little tutorial there um, so that is true for any command that sh sh shows up here I select that the help menu is all automatically going to give me some tutorials to the to the side there so in addition to um, these um, workshops or these online tutorials you can sort of look at those so that help menu is actually pretty useful um, and I just if I'm in a command just like AutoCAD if I'm in a command I can just hit my escape key and that will get me out of the command as well as the right click as I mentioned before is going to execute the last command so right now it's asking for I guess a box because the box is what the last command was all right so I hit layer and I'm gonna minimize this back I tend to push it as far to the right as I can just so I can see the materiality and again this is up to you um, you can also you know slide this if you have really short layer names slide this a little bit over and I just um, want as much screen real estate as possible um, let's see uh, just to finish the thought here again like you know, Rhino is a pretty it's it's very intuitive the interface is a lot more understanding than other uh, uh, tools um, or other let's say 3d modeling softwares um, but it's deep so there's a, a lot to sort of get into so forgive me if I'm going one tangent or the other or again I'm just trying to give you a general overview and kind of touch on some of the issues that um, and tools or procedures that you'll uh, that'll be useful for um, the studio and the media and architecture course um, so I mentioned I could set up a perspective I can go back here to view one um, okay say I wanted to develop this as a you know a start of a drawing a perspective drawing um, what I'd be able to do is if I under display um, there are different display options one of the options here is to capture a viewport so I can capture this view here um, save it as an image file like PNG um, let's see if I have something set up for yeah it would be in here don't really have anything set up but I could save this as a PNG file and then sort of scale it up or what have you um, or work with it digitally if I want or print it out um, it's just relative though to the viewport so it's taking the viewport resolution and that's what it's uh, going to uh, export 
I can though, in a particular view um, as well, just print this. And um, there are different options here for printing. So if I want to work in 11 by 17, um, I go down here to these different options and you can just select different printers and I had the PDF selected. Um, the um, ledger size was also selected. Um, 11 by 17, that's what that basically is. The orientation here, it looks like it's set to portrait here, but it's showing um, landscape. So I'm going to assume landscape is going to be what it uh, uh, is going to print um, into the PDF file. It changed here to vector output. I'm going to go to raster. So I get some of those subtleties. And when you kind of turn on, um, let me just uh, close this out. I'm going to go to see if this works here. Turn on the sun. Um, and you can see, depending on what time of day, that those shades are going to change a little bit. So say I wanted some of this. The sun's coming over from this direction and casting a shadow over there. Um, so maybe I wanted a little bit of that depth there. So uh, can I have that? There's also the skylight, which is kind of like a backfill sort of color, so these shadows aren't quite so dark. So that is useful sometimes. Depends on what kind of image you're really looking for. I'm going to keep it dramatic. Um, then I can go back to standard and then print. And you can see it's going to maintain some of those shades in there. It's very rough, you know. It's not very super accurate. It's not like rendering. It would, it's much more precise in terms of what's going on um, with that image. But, you know, it's enough to give us some three-dimensionality and something to work with. So rastered output. output. Um, I can change the color. I'll just keep that as the grayscale. I can actually scale this. It's a perspective, so it doesn't have um, any scale. But I could do it with the orthographic drawing as well and give it a particular... Um, uh, scale um, that's here. Um, you can see here scale options would show up here. Um, the margins and how it's centered and visibility, the line types and the width. I mean, you can get pretty detailed with this. Minimize some of these. Um, and the printer details here, it's telling you about scale and so forth. So I can output this as an image. I have some shade to work with, and with an overlay with trace, just manual drafting, um, the drawing can be enhanced significantly. So that might be, I often use this in concert with um, other renders, whether it's from V-Ray or from Flamingo, um, and kind of layer those together in Photoshop. So again, that's another option. All right, so that's kind of getting far off a little bit, um, talking about exporting and what one of the main concerns I know that everyone is uh, going to be um, dealing with is just how do you start modeling and dealing with um, creating surfaces and so forth so let's get to that I'm going to change my view if in this view as well it's going to take a little bit more um, video RAM or your graphics card or what have you so it's, it's going to be a little bit slower because it's constantly calculating these different shades on those surfaces um, so again I'll go back to uh, ghosted so it'll be a little bit quicker. Um, okay, so these are set up, and again, this file is available on the OneDrive. Um, so you can practice some of these preliminary ways to create surfaces. One thing to keep in mind um, are the different categories of uh, modeling components in Rhino. Um, there are, uh, uh, let's see, curves. Um, which includes um, lines or polylines, so straight line segments, um, rectangles, also polygon, um, freeform, which would be sort of free kind of curves, something like this would be more of a freeform, um, in addition to other kinds of shapes that you can create, circles and so forth. There's also some uh, good tools here at the bottom, um, extending curves, fillet curves, chamfer curves, offset curves, which is important, you can blend curves, convert them, um, curve from objects, so different ways to extract curves from a, a surface or a solid, and then curve edit tools. Um, then there are surfaces, and so those are basically the, the NURBS-based um, surfaces that Rhino works with. Now, a lot of other uh, software, 3D uh, modeling software, use polygons, polygon meshes. Um, and so those are a series of flat, sometimes triangular, 
um, surfaces that come together to create an overall curve. A rhino goes directly using a mathematical algorithm or what have you, um, so that the curves are actually curved. So these surfaces, if you kind of have them undulating, it's actually um, doing that. Um, it's not necessarily reduced down to or kind of broken down in terms of resolution into polygon surfaces. And so that's kind of the difference between Rhino and Nerves based and some of the other software programs. So Surface is one of the main uh, uh, components here. You can create different planes, loft, you can rail, um, revolve from edge curves. I'll show you some of these uh, options as well. And there are also Surface edit tools and then there are um, so you can extrude a curve straight or along a curve to create uh, a surface um, and so forth. There are also solids. Now when Rhino deals with a solid, basically it calls it solid here, but what they are, um, and if you select it, what's going to show up as is a, uh, a poly surface. So a series of single surfaces that are joined um, together. Um, so those together, when they then are enclosed like a box, um, create a solid. And... Um, you have to imagine that box, um, I guess, as being like an empty box as opposed to a box that's filled with uh, mass. So if I go into this, like one of these boxes, and I this is a solid that I created, and I explode it, and I remove that surface, it's an empty box. So that's just important to remember um, as you're modeling. Control-Z um, will undo just like many um, programs. I'm also going to change my lens length back to something reasonable here. The wider angle tends to be a little bit more difficult to uh, maneuver around because it's a little, little bit too distorted. Um, let's see. Mouse functionality. I talked a little bit about that. I'm going to go into a top view. And I can right click down here. I so can't do that. I'll go here and I'm going to go to a top view. So set view, top. Um, and I talked about mouse functionality in terms of just navigating, right? So the scroll wheel, zoom. Um, I'm in orthographic view right now. So the right click, if I hold down, is going to be a pan. Um, and then the, um, the other left click is really doesn't do anything but selection. Now you notice when I'm selecting and dragging a window. I could just click and select an object, but if there is a series of objects, say these two, and I wanted a series of uh, uh, selections, the selection strategy is the same as AutoCAD. So if I um, drag a window, you see that's a solid line, so um, any object will be selected as long as it's inside of the window. So that wasn't entirely inside of the window, it won't select it. Now it is, and it will select it. As opposed to the left drag, which has the dash line, so anything that intersects that line will be selected. So again, that's pretty handy um, in terms of uh, working through your model. Um, let's see, I talked about layers, properties, um, looked at document units and properties. Um, one thing that you may want to notice, if I go back here to standard, again, I'm just going to right click to get to settings over the rendering sphere there. Um, there's also mesh and right now it's set to jagged and faster. The mesh um, is actually, I'm going to perspective view. There are two sort of components to um, these surfaces. There's the wireframe that's there so it's these curves coming together, a network of curves that's defining that, um, uh, that surface. Um, and also then the kind of the fill, the, so the fill in. And sometimes you'll see a discrepancy between the um, actual wireframe and the um, surface that it's rendering. So I zoom up really close, I can sort of see these facets here. Um, and that's relative to the, the render mesh, I'll call it. Right now it's set to um, jagged and faster. If I wanted to have this be um, uh, much smoother coinciding with that wireframe, I could, it's like smooth, that just means it's slower, it means operation will be slower. So you're um, your computer may bog down a little bit more depending on how complex things are. So they got a little bit tighter there. And we're really zoomed in pretty good here. So, um, But also you can set a custom setting, and sometimes I'll do this, but um, I'll create a, a custom setting in order to really maximize um, the view. If I, if I really want some accuracy and these are really decipherable, I may go ahead and 
like change that. So that got really tight. Although the, that just means the model when you're zooming around may get a little bit bogged down. So that's why you're seeing the difference between um, back to mesh, um, jagged faster. So you're going to be able to navigate faster, smooth and slower, slowing down in terms of navigation and the customize different than that. So generally when you're modeling jagged and faster is fine. Once you're going to output or you want to get some imagery out of this, you uh, want to move into smoother, smooth and slower or customize your own view. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. And I talked about how to set up the grid again. That's in the render settings. Um, grid. And then you can set up those different options uh, accordingly, however you'd like those set up. It's really, you know, user-based, you know, what you are comfortable with. Sometimes it, for rough measurements, it's nice to know that, you know, this is like um, a particular distance, whether it's, you know, from these bigger squares might be three feet, and then I know each sub is uh, um, six inches. Um, that's just kind of helpful. So if I'm sort of modeling and wanting to be free of uh, sort of exact dimensions, uh, that's sometimes uh, helpful. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, so a few things. I'm going to go back into top view um, and just a few 2D, potentially 3D um, ways to draw and working through some of these tools. So um, working through the polyline. Now again, polyline, um, the control point curve or curves here, all of these sort of line-based uh, objects are going to be, there's options uh, under curve. So it groups them all under curve, just so you know that. Um, so if I click this, obviously I'm working on a, and I want to make sure I'm on the right layer. Um, it doesn't really matter right now because I'm not going to do anything special. So I'll, I'll just stay on um, extrude curve, or maybe I'll extrude this curve. I can just start clicking here. Um, right now my ortho is toggled on. Um, and right here, I can toggle it off down at the bottom. I guess I want to mention this. Um, this tells you what uh, layer you're on, the position that you are at, um, the distance right here you can see. So there's the position of the first point, and then the distance of uh, the next one. Um, grid snap, ortho is this. So if I toggle it off, I, have, I can go in any direction. Um, if I click it on, then I'm really working here um, horizontally or vertically. If I hold my shift key down, it'll let me, it'll free that up. Um, so that's kind of a nice little quick instead of going down here and having to click. Um, and vice versa, if it's off and I hold my shift key down, it's going to go vertical or horizontal. Um, object snap is up above. Let me just pull this down. Um, typically, you won't see that here. I usually have it docked up here um, by my command line because I just don't need that much space for that. So if I um, turn on object snap, this window pops up and I can select different options to end or near, point, um, center, mid, per, uh, uh, perpendicular, tangent. Um, I usually keep end, midpoint, intersection, perpendicular. Sometimes I'll toggle on and off depending. Sometimes it interrupts getting to these others if I want to be more absolute. Um, center would be center of a circle. Um, this would be midpoint of like a line or a surface or right? it's snapping to the midpoint of those and you see end intersection two lines coming together or the end um, of that surface end of a line um, and so I'll just drag this up here and I could drag it in different locations see it highlighting so it could be a bar here bar there I think some people have it at the bottom this to me is open real estate so I'll drag it all the way to the side until I see a little box show up there and then I that's where I dock it. Keep that puppy there. Expand it so I can also then just disable it or enable it. Now I'm still in this line command, um, right? And so um, um, I can go off now and start making other, you know, variables, toggle things on and off while still being in that command. I can hold the shift key down if I want to go straight over. If I wanted a particular distance. I could just type that distance in. If the units are set to inches, it's going to assume inches unless I tell it otherwise with a foot symbol like this up here. Um, 
I could put in an inches symbol, it doesn't matter. The default right now is inches, so if I type in 12, now I know that that's exactly 12 inches from this other point that I already selected. You can see by the red that's highlighted there, and um, then I can pick um, a direction and draw that line. If I want to draw another one, right now it's not giving me the access to this line. I can turn on my object snap and then move in another direction and keep sort of drawing accordingly. It's also going to assume, um, right now this will be all as one. Since I drew it as a polyline, it's going to keep it continuous. This was a separate uh, 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 instance here, but I could select those two and just type in join, because I want to join those together so it'll be all one polyline. It's also this puzzle piece right here is the join uh, icon. Hit enter and now it's all one, one object. Um, let's see, I think I'm going to break this um, tutorial up into two pieces. Now this is getting a little bit long, um, but there's a, a lot to go through. Um, I'll show you, um, let's see, well, one other thing too with line. If I have it here, so I just selected a point. I could type in a particular point, so if I wanted to execute this command, um, and I, it's asking me for the start of the line, um, 0 comma 0, I can go to the origin, so push me there. It's automatically assuming that Z is 0 in this top view, and that'll be the same in the right view or the front view, basically the elevation views. It's going to push that to what's called the construction plane, and that is basically at 0 depending on where what orientation you are. So here Z is 0. So everything that I draw is going to be on the Z 0 unless I tell it otherwise. Um, so as I mentioned, I can type in a distance um, for the line. Um, so say again we go up to 12 inches. Also if I input this caret here um, and give it a particular angle, say 45 degrees, it's automatically going to draw that line. So this is 12 inches at 45 degrees. Um, so I just, the symbol there is 12 is the units and this little caret Sort of, it's like the less than sort of symbol, but it's really talking about angle. Um, and then the degree, so 45 degrees. So I could do that again. Maybe it's 24, um, so 24 inches. And then I have the caret there. And maybe then, in this case, it's going to be, um, I could just type in negative 45 degrees. So if you want it to be accurate with your drafting that way, you can use a lot of uh, type-ins. Um, and it depends. I don't tend to do a lot of this kind of drafting. It's more about the model making. So I tend to do more of this in AutoCAD and then bring it in and, and develop it from there. But it depends on, on, on how I'm working with it um, and what I'm doing. Um, sometimes I'm just modeling and not necessarily drafting um, like this. But again, it depends. But it's nice to know that that's an option. Now I can just select this again, hit my delete key, and that's automatically going to delete that. Um, the other thing is for a rectangle, I can start it at whatever point. Again, I could type that in. And then if I type in at, say, 24, comma, 24, so x, y, 24, 24, it's going to make this, this is the original corner, and this is the opposite corner at uh, X24, Y24. And so you can, once you have that at symbol, basically it means it's about this point, 24 over, 24 up, X, Y. Um, so those are just handy kind of tools in terms of the um, drafting uh, part of it with um, curves. Um, let's see, I think that will be it for this one. So just a little bit on curves. Um, I'll create a second um, tutorial that will get into um, more of the surface making. So we'll get into some of these others and we'll pick up right where we left off here. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, guys, and we'll see you in a bit.